adventures and travels led him to Jerusalem. There, the Jewish leaders brought up false charges against him, and Paul was taken prisoner and sent to Caesarea to stand trial before King Agrippa. Although King Agrippa found that Paul had committed no crime, because he was a Roman citizen and had appealed to the Roman Emperor, Paul was sent to Rome. Under the watchful eyes of Julius, a Roman officer, Paul and a number of other prisoners boarded a large sailing ship that would carry them to many port cities on the long journey to Rome. Once aboard the ship, Paul was led on a winding journey that took him from Caesarea to Sidon to Myra to Nidus, and then around the island of Crete, where they docked at a place called Fair Havens. Getting to Fair Havens had been a long and difficult journey. Winter was approaching, bringing with it dangerous weather and sailing conditions. Paul pleaded with the sailors and officers to stay on Crete. Paul warned them, continuing this journey will bring disaster to our ship, cargo, and our own lives. We should remain here. Despite Paul's warnings, the officer in charge was persuaded by the ship's captain to find a safer place on the island of Crete where they could spend the winter. Soon after they set sail, what was a gentle breeze turned into hurricane-force winds that blew their ship far off course and out into the open sea. The sailors tried to control the ship, but nothing they did could put them back on course. Exhausted, the sailors secured the ship as best as they could with ropes and then let the storm drive them wherever it pleased. For many days, the ship sailed on raging seas under the black skies of the storm that blotted out the sun and the stars. Exhausted and starving, everyone on board began to lose hope that they would survive this voyage. All except for Paul. Paul stood in front of the crew and passengers and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not left Crete. But take courage. God's angel came to me last night and said that the ship will be destroyed, but all of us will survive. Even though we will be shipwrecked, God will save us. Finally, after 14 nights of fear and misery, the sailors sensed that the ship was approaching land. By measuring the water's depth, the sailors were able to tell that they were getting closer. They dropped the ship's anchors, hoping that they would stop before crashing against the rocks. Some of the terrified sailors couldn't wait to get off the ship and onto dry land, so they lowered the lifeboat to the water while pretending to lower anchors. Paul told a Roman officer what was happening and warned, Unless we all stay on this boat, you won't survive. Hearing this, the officer cut the lifeboat loose and it fell away. Before the sun came up the next day, Paul urged everyone to eat so they would have strength to survive the events that would take place that day. Everyone on board knew that their voyage would end with a shipwreck. Paul could see the fear and concern on their faces, so he offered them encouragement by reminding them that God said everyone on the ship would make it safely to shore. Paul then took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of the crew and passengers. He broke it into pieces and then began to eat. Everyone on board ate until they were full and they were strengthened and encouraged. At daylight, the sailors decided to run the ship aground. They cut away the anchors and aimed the ship for the beach. The ship slammed into a sandbar that was still a bit off the island shore. The ship wouldn't budge out of the sand, and the waves began to smash what was left of the ship into pieces. The Roman soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners to stop them from swimming away and escaping. But one soldier, who wanted to spare Paul's life, stopped the others from carrying out their plan. Some prisoners jumped overboard and swam ashore, while others survived by clinging to broken pieces of ship. In the end, everyone made it safely ashore on the island of Malta.